show you today is gooseberry jam. Um, I picked a load of gooseberries the other day um, and I let you know about it and I said that when I make gooseberry jam I will let you know. Uh, gooseberry jam is really very easy to make. Um, all you need is uh, the same amount of I've got a kilo of gooseberries, a kilo of granulated sugar. You don't need special jam sugar for this because they are very high in pectin, the gooseberries, so they will set much easier. Uh, you need 400 millilitres of cold water and you also need the juice of half a lemon. So I will go through step by step with you how to make gooseberry jam. Right now in here I have my gooseberries. You need gooseberries that are ripe so when you squeeze them there's a bit of give in them okay. If they're hard then they're not ripe so make sure that they've got a bit of squish in them. If you want to double check that they are done then you can always eat one and if it tastes nice and sweet then they're done. If they're very sharp then they still need to stay on the bush. Now the first thing you need to do is to wash them and you need to top and tail them. This is something that you've most probably heard people say before but some of you may not know what it is. Okay, The gooseberry hangs like this on the plant. This is the top of it. That's its tail, its bottom. So all you need to do is you need to take those two bits off because they're very hard Okay, and you don't want those in your jam. So just take them off, make sure they're all clean Okay, and then that one's ready, so I'll just get on and do the rest of them. Right, so in the preserving pan, you need to put juice of half a lemon, which I've just put in there, um, a kilo of um, gooseberries, uh, weigh the gooseberries after you've topped and tailed them, okay, so a kilo of those, and 400 millilitres of water. Okay, what you need to do then, switch the heat on, you need to bring it to a boil and once, once it starts to boil then you need to boil it for 15 minutes. Right, well hopefully you can see it's, it's starting to boil quite vigorously now. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to boil it like this for 15 minutes. Okay, stir it occasionally at this point, okay, um, then it doesn't catch on the bottom um, and um, by in 15 minutes time the fruit would have gone all nice and soft and started to break down. So I'll set the timer and I'll leave it to boil for 15 minutes. Right, it's been boiling now for 15 minutes. The fruit is lovely and soft now. Okay, so you can see it's broken down quite a bit. So turn the temperature down and now we've got to add the sugar. Okay, we won't add it all together, we'll add it a little bit, let that little bit dissolve <clears throat> and then add a little bit more and keep doing it like that. Um, and uh, so off we go. But just remember a kilo of normal granulated sugar and uh, you don't need anything, any specific jam sugar or preserving sugar because there's loads and loads of pectin in the gooseberries so hopefully we won't have a problem with setting so I will keep uh, adding this sugar a little bit at a time and then I will come back to you when I'm done right now once you've added all of the sugar in you'll notice it goes slightly darker in colour that's absolutely fine don't worry about that so put the heat up a little bit I've got it on a uh, sort of a not the smallest ring, but the next smallest ring. Don't put it on the biggest ring um, because it's, it, it will boil too quickly um, and you're more likely to burn the jam. So keep stirring it um, until all of the sugar has dissolved. Okay, this can take a little while, so just be patient with it. Okay, the way to test to see if all the sugar has dissolved is to get the back of the spoon and to run your finger along the back of the spoon. If you feel any rough bits, 
but be careful because it's quite hot. If you feel any rough bits, then the sugar's not dissolved. But I think that's practically done. I'll just give it a little bit more. Now that the sugar's in, it's more likely to burn. So when you put it on the rolling boil, the really high boil that we're going to put it on in a minute, you need to stir it frequently. Okay, so don't go and leave it to, to boil on its own. Um, stay with it and not constantly stirring it, but frequently every minute or so give it a good stir round otherwise it will it will burn so I'll just bring that up to a rolling boil which shouldn't take very long and I will come back to you in a minute right so it's just coming up to its rolling boil so we will boil it like this for 10 minutes remember you need to Stir it frequently, just up and down like this, to stop it from catching on the bottom. Now you will find that you will get, can you see this here, it's some scum around here. If you stir the jam, it then gets stuck to the side of the pan, which is good. So once you've stirred it, and if there's any stuck to the side, just very, very carefully with a spoon, take it off okay you can always remove it all at the end but this seems to be a nice easy way of doing it okay because you don't want the scum in the jam because it, it's all white and it sets and it's it's horrible okay but we're getting there with the first boil just a little bit longer right so the buzz has just gone off uh, to say that it's 10 minutes of um, rolling boil is done. So we'll give it a one more stir, turn the heat off, let it settle just for a little bit and I will go and get the saucer and we will test for the crinkle test. Right, so this plate has been in the fridge for quite a while, so it's nice and cold now. So I've put a little bit of jam on there um, I'm going to put it back in the fridge for a, a few minutes until it's cold and then I will test uh, and see if it's set. Right, so this has been in the fridge for a good couple of minutes. Let's just test for the crinkle test. Oh wow, look at that. That's amazing. There we are. And if we tip it, it doesn't fall back. So, oh, <laughs> just lost some on the floor. So that is definitely set. If it doesn't crinkle and if it runs back too quickly, then boil it for another five minutes, okay, and then do the crinkle test again. Now, I'm not going to jar it straight away. I'm going to leave it to set for about 10 minutes or so. Um, make sure you've sterilized your jars. Um, there are various ways of doing those. Um, so whichever one works best for you um, but yes just wait until uh, wait for 10 minutes before you jar it up um, then the all the fruit is evenly distributed otherwise it, all the fruit rises to the top okay but that is easy peasy and very very tasty gooseberry jam well, I hope you, you've enjoyed watching me make some gooseberry jam. It's very, very easy. If you do get chance to make some yourselves, do. Uh, it's lovely. I love gooseberry jam. Very, very, um, very scrummy and sweet. It's not sharp at all. Um, I got that recipe from the Good Food website, so we'll put the link up um, so that you can um, maybe make some yourself. Well, I hope you found that useful, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.